one of the things about this that I'm always, that, that I'm always curious when actors are sort of, you know, in movies where they're in uh, small locations, confined locations, is you can't move a lot. So you're in that, you're in that co-pilot seat for a lot of this film. Are, are, are you an actor who likes to move around? Is that hard to know you're stuck in this one place for so much of this movie? Well, I am a little bit claustrophobic, so it is a small space and like the controls take up most of the room and, and you can't stand up. So, you know, we all were hitting our heads a lot because you forget, you know, but um, but the, the director wanted to be accurate and have it be exactly the same as the plane that the White family was in. And so they were in a very small plane. Right. <laughs> you said it was claustrophobic. I mean, did you get claustrophobic at all during shooting? Or were you, or did, were you able to get up enough? I mean, it around? wasn't that bad. It was really hot. It was hot. It was right. summer. And uh, you have to turn off the air conditioning when you, you shoot because it makes a noise. So it was hot. And we were all sweating and freaking out. Um, and we have to, you have to really imagine things that aren't there because you're just, you're looking at a wall and you have to pretend you're looking at a storm or you're looking at the runway or you're looking at all this different stuff. So it's definitely challenging. Did the movie make you afraid to fly at all? Did it, did it change your opinion about flying? No, it actually made me want to learn how to fly because looking at the, at the, you know, the controls and having Dennis who knows how to fly and there was this like flight expert and just having them talk to you about how what the controls all do, I thought it was really interesting. It made me like want to learn how to fly a plane. Love it. <laughs> well, so many stars. I mean, I think Tom Cruise does. Dennis Quaid does. There, there, there are others. Yeah, I think Tom Hanks. I want to say like there are a lot of actors who do fly. So wow. yeah, you'd be joining the elite club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like an expensive uh, hobby, though. I don't know. Maybe I don't know if I'll be. Doing that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I would like to. It sounds cool. Right, right, absolutely. Uh, obviously, there, there's a faith element to, uh, to to the story and to the movie. And and while the you, the characters in the movie are specifically Christian, I wonder if you think that it might resonate outside of that faith as well. If you were well, all faiths, yeah. For me, I, I wouldn't consider myself to be very religious, but I do think I'm spiritual. So I think it's about the dark night of the soul, where you feel like something terrible is going to happen, and you don't know if you can get through it, and then just find that connection to a higher power or, you know, whatever you believe in like that, any religion, you know, I don't think it's trying to exclude anyone from any religion. I think it's just having that faith and having that connection to a higher power. And it's interesting. I mean, certainly a movie like Jesus Revolution is doing really well at the box office right now. So I wonder if you think that that faith audiences are, are underserved in that way. If we, if we, if more of these stories should be told. I actually don't know that movie. What is that movie? <clears throat> It's a movie with Kelsey Grammer. It's okay. about a, uh, a preacher, a real life preacher in California in the 1970s, who's sort of like a, a huh. hippie preacher. Uh, yeah. So that's it's made something like fifty million dollars at the box office. Or Interesting. Well, I mean, to be honest, I probably wouldn't seek out those kinds of movies. But after I saw this movie, I think they did a great job. The director did another film called Soul Surfer, which was also kind of had mm -hmm. a faith element, but it's not in your face. It's more about like you know, how people get through really difficult situations and what do you turn to? Because I think even if, whether you be religious or not, there's moments where you really need to, you know, if you're in a life and death situation, you could pray, you know, and whether you're praying to a Christian God or Muslim or Buddhist or whatever, Jewish, like, you know, everyone's looking, I think, for that spiritual connection in moments. Have you screened the audience uh, or the movie with audiences who, who are religious? Have you gotten any feedback about that aspect of it? Um, we watched it at Roma Downey's house. You know, Roma is very, mm -hmm. you know, religious and spiritual. So we just watched it with a few friends. But I, a few of my friends who watched it said they were on the edge of their seat. My manager's boyfriend works at NASA. He works at SpaceX. So he's very familiar with, you know, engineering and flying. And he, they were like, he was screaming at the, at the TV, like, why don't you have a second pilot? And they were like yelling at the TV. And so, I mean, I guess it's, it's a tense. People get tense a little bit when they watch it, even though it, it's feel good at the same time. Right. You get to act opposite to uh, younger actresses who play your daughters in the movie. And, yes. and I'm sure they're probably around the age you were when you started in this business uh, back in the eighties. I mean, sort of working with them now and sort of whenever you work with a younger performer, can you imagine getting your start today uh, versus when you did at the time? Like, do you notice a contrast uh, b b between now and then? I think it's slightly idea? less sexist now, but I think it still is sexist, you know? Um, but yeah, of course you want to be, you know, nurturing, supportive person to younger people that are starting off, um, which, you know, I'm playing their mom, so I am feeling that way towards them. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's, a little bit better in terms of sexism, but not a lot. 
And are there different concerns they have? I mean, certainly they're living in the age of social media and actors are sort of encouraged to put themselves out there in a way that maybe, you, you know, we, we we weren't, the kids of the 80s weren't. Do you notice that difference at all? Well, I mean, there's disturbing statistics about young teenage girls committing suicide more because of social media. So I think that's really disturbing. I, I particularly care about women's issues. So I, I'm, you know, I'm concerned about how does it affect women and young girls? That is, you know, disturbing. Did they uh, did they ask any career advice of you? Again, being young performers in the business, being able to work with someone like you who's, who's had this great career. Um, I'm trying to, I mean, of course, always the best career advice is just believe in yourself, you know, like really just, you have to, you know, believe in yourself and be confident and not listen too much to what other people say. So that's, it's great advice. And the Academy Awards, all the actors winning were just saying, believe in yourself. And I mean, that's never bad advice. <laughs>